With the second pick, the Denver Broncos select Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP, Von Miller. Von Miller. Von Miller. Von Miller. What up? This is Von Miller, and this is the Von Cast on Bleacher Report in the Bleacher Report app. Um, you can leave your questions in the comments below about today's episode, and I get back to them in a minute. Um, today's uh, episode is going to be super cool. Got an episode with one of my guys. One of the biggest reasons why I came here to Buffalo. I don't think it would. I don't think it would be a Von in Buffalo if it wasn't for him and another guy that we had here. Um, I think the Buffalo Bills have, have been the most swaggiest team for the last two years, and he's been the captain of that team for <laughs> sure. And um, without any further ado, this is my guy, Stefan Diggs. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> thanks for having me on, Bob. I appreciate you, bro. Like I said before, man, this is one of the biggest reasons why I came here. I know we talked about it before. Um, last year when I was with Denver, um, it was like some talk about them not picking up like my six-year option. And I talked to Diggs, like, and not even, that was like, that was like a serious conversation, but, you know, throughout, um, throughout previous moments before that, like I had talked to him and asked him, like, hey, how's Buffalo? Yeah. How you liking in Buffalo? Because my guy, he been all the way, he been all the way around the world. He been everywhere. Um, you know, I seen him out in the streets multiple times. Like, LA, LA, LA. You know, LA, Miami, I seen my guy multiple places, and I was like, dang, if it's, if it's cool enough for Diggs, like, it'd be cool enough. For me, man, and you could just talk about some of those, like some of those moments that we had before, mm -hmm. like I got here. Yeah, it was crazy because, you know, I would see you in L.A. You, you know, you being in L.A. a little bit and yeah. being in Miami, so it was just like this. Damn, like it was hard to convince you. Now, the first time I tried to get him to come to Buffalo, he was like, "Man, I don't know." <laughs> da -da -da -da. And then, like, I guess things started kind of turning a corner when uh, you had like a little bit of conversation with yeah. Denver, and it was something like this, man. Well. You know, I'm, I'm still here. And I, I was think like, that was yeah. way that was way back in nineteen. That was yeah. in 20, 2020. Mm -hmm. I think that was in 2020. Um, I had talked to him. I was just asking questions. I had asked, you know, Diggs, Tremaine. Yeah. Um, I think that was like one of my first times talking to Josh on Instagram. And it's crazy, like, cause I hit everybody up, mm -hmm. and everybody got back to me, and everybody said like the same shit. Everybody was like, "Man, Buffalo, cool, man. I love Buffalo, this and that." And it still kind of felt like, damn, like, I don't know, man. Cause that is, <laughs> it's, it's Buffalo, but. You know, to like all the viewers and stuff, like when you get here, like you just you just understand it. Like, you know, it's not really about like the clubs or like, you know, restaurants or, you know, anything like that flashy. The people here, like Bill's Mafia, the people at the facility, the lunch ladies, like um, the infrastructure of the team from, you know, like the uh, the assistants to like the janitors to the front office ladies, like everybody's so accommodating. Everybody, you know, they want to see you do your very best. Everybody's happy all the time. And I can understand why everybody, you know, everybody loves Buffalo. I saw it was hard. Like I said, it was kind of hard to convince you because, I mean, it's it's kind of hard to say no to L.A., especially, yeah. you know what I'm saying, you spend time in L.A. LA's a, L.A.'s a beautiful place. It's a perfect yeah. place if things are going right, too. And y'all went on a hell of a run just to see your impact there. I was like this, damn, like... I mean, last I was just like, what could have been? And I was like, shit, when shit kind of started coming in fruition, when you was thinking about it, I was like, this, damn, we really, we really might get him. I'm, I'm thankful you came, you came, you came. Man, I'm, I'm thankful I, I came here too, man. And, and it, I would not have been here if it wasn't for my dog. So I, I, I appreciate you, my boy. Um, I, you know, back in uh, 2021, when they was going through like my, um, they was thinking about picking up my last year of my deal, and I was just, you know, I was just talking to see how it was, just so I could like, you know, get, you know, like just so, just in case it did happen, because in, in today's you know, league, you never really know. And, um, you know, I was talking to Diggs, and obviously, you know, I ended up going to Denver. I get traded to the Los Angeles Rams, and I go through a whole run with L.A., and then um, the free agency comes. I think free agency was, like, right around a month after the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right after the Super Bowl, like, you, I mean, you still have the Super Bowl. Like, you got parties here, Vegas, this and that. And honestly, like, I never really thought that I was going to leave L.A. Yeah. Like, I was like, bro, like, Aaron Donald... You know, everybody else in L.A., like Sean McVay, uh, Les Snead, just L.A., the city in itself, like, it's hard to leave that spot. But Aaron Donald, um, Jalen Ramsey, uh, Greg Gaines, and Leonard Floyd, I was like, bro, no matter what the record is, no matter what happens, you know, here in L.A., no matter if we're good or not, like, I could just ride out with those guys for the rest of my career. Yeah. I could, like, ride off into the sunset with these guys, bro. We in L.A., like, we're going to get sacks regardless. It's me and Aaron Donald. I never played – with a guy like Aaron mm -hmm. Donald ever in my career. He's the best defensive player I played with. And I played with some guys. I played with Brian Dawkins. I done played with Chanton Bailey. DeMarcus, DeMarcus Ware. Ware. Like I done play I done played with I done played with a lot of guys. I Akeem Tlaib, Chris Harris. 
you know, TJ Ward, the whole no fly yeah. zone. Like I don't play with some guys, but Aaron Donald, like to walk away from that, like it was it was tough for me. And then free agency come. And the first day of free agency for me was like, oh, you ain't never been in free agency, huh? You, yeah, you got traded here. Yeah, bro, it's trade. bro, it's crazy, bro. Like I went from I went from having 16 teams potentially interested to 10 teams right. to five teams to two teams. And it's just the Buffalo Bills right. and the Rams. And it all happened like so fast. It happened within like two or three days. And I'm in the Bahamas. I'm in the Bahamas like, and I'm going through free agency in the Bahamas. I'm sitting with the phone like right here while I'm sleeping. <laughs> and like I'm just waiting for any single call. Like, and, um, you know, they called me about Denver. They had picked up Randy Gregory. You know, and Coach McVay was calling me, asking me about, like, you know, what's going on while we waiting? And then the second day of free agency, uh, my agent called me. He was like, hey, like, Josh Allen will give you a call. Like, Diggs going to give you a call. And I was like, damn, like, the Buffalo Bills for real? Because I almost got drafted by the Bills. I almost got drafted by the Bills. They was the number three pick, and I was the number wow. two pick. So I almost got drafted by the Bills. So I was like, damn, the Bills coming. And I start, I hit you. I we, I think uh, y'all Facetime me. Yeah, hell, you called you trying to get you on that horn. Like, what's going on? I need to, I need to see what's going on. Bro, but you know, I just, you know, it, the whole hold up for me was really just like leaving L.A. and and, and and Aaron Donald and all of those guys, man. But once you get here, you really just understand like what makes Buffalo special. You know, the food is crazy. I think that's my biggest difficulty here. Yeah, is the food and trying to stay like I underweight. But trust me, I know. Trust me, I know. She's all right over here. I mean, LA, they got good food too. So I just can't imagine being in your situation because like walking away from LA took a lot. Yeah, you know what I'm that's why it's like I'm. I'm. That's why I say I'm thankful you came here because once you get here, you really feel like all right. This is this is why they love it here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. But before you get here, it's like man, I don't know. Because when I was about to get traded here, it was like. It was a big deal for me because I was like this. Damn, like the first time they tried to trade for me was in the season. I told my agent, like, I mean, not right now. I don't know, yeah. not right now, because you know when people presume when you outside looking in, this was before, like when we had Halloween and season. They had went to the playoffs, but I was like this, man. I don't know about Buffalo. Yeah. That shit don't. It shit don't sound right right yeah. now. Then I was like, after the season, I was like, man, it's either I go there, or it was like the Jets or somewhere like that. I'm like this. I'm, I'm gonna go to Buffalo. I'm gonna see what's going on. Yeah, bro, we got fucking Josh Allen, and yes. you know they had a they had a whole like they got they they, they Brandon Bean. I'm a big fan of Brandon Bean. Yeah, like, yeah. And I had talked to you about Bean too uh, when I was got when I had uh, when I had signed. I asked him about Bean. He's like, man, Bean cool as shit. Yeah. Um, I had uh, and been around other great gyms before, like Les Snead and you know um, George Payton and. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, John Lynch yeah. and, and, and of course, John Elway. So to get around Brandon Bean, who's, you know, he just makes the position look like so desirable. Mm-hmm. And I talked to him about Brandon Bean and Brandon Bean said the same thing about like uh, Buffalo. You're going to learn to love it. Like it's a great place. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I'm sitting here with my guy Diggs on the Von Cash. Like we five games, six games into the season. Like I love Buffalo. And I'm happy. I, and I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. I'm came here. Um, at this point in my career, it's all about winning games and being successful and having another shot at a championship. And we got all of those things. Plus, we got, you know, great fans and great infrastructure of the team. Everybody's happy from Coach McDermott all the way down, man. It's 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 really a, a great place to be. So if it's any, you know, uh, potential free agents or anybody that's thinking about Buffalo, man, you got you got Diggs, Josh Allen, myself. You know, we got some other teammates that might be coming here. I don't want to blow it up on right, that. Right, right. No, we got some right. more teammates that might be coming. <laughs> Um, my offensive line, Deion Dawkins, like, bro, we got the whole nine here, man. And, you know, if you if you don't want your music producer, all of all <laughs> <even> the <laughs> videos. <laughs> Come on over to the Buffalo Bills, man. Well, you know, Buffalo, they don't really have, like, a lot of things to do. At this point in my life, I just play golf and I play video games all day. Yeah. And if I'm not playing video games, I'm streaming. Um, that's what my off day consists of. Or if my son is here, like, you know, I spend most of my time with my son. It's either my son, golf, or video games, like, what do you do on your off day? Shit, uh, it's a busy ass day typically. Like you know, we got the body maintenance stuff. Yeah. So on Monday, I got uh, two massages a week, basically uh, two IVs a week, two stretches a week, um, some other little minor stuff, a little hyperbaric chamber action, little stuff like that to try to keep my body fresh. You get a hyperbaric? I, yeah. I, I had a hyperbaric in Denver. Like you get in there consistently. I try to. You know what I'm saying? I don't get as much as I can because you can't bring no phone in there. Yeah. So it's kind of like. I get in there when I can, you know what I'm saying, maybe a couple of hours, you know what I'm saying, see how you much do the I one at the facility or No, I got one at the house. Okay. So okay. I try to do that. Uh, I pick out what I'm about to wear prior during the week, you know what I'm saying, see what I got going on for the weekend because, you so know, you, the week you pick heavy. your fit out before it, like? Yeah, probably on like a, uh, my off day usually Tuesday, 
what I'm saying? But you know, at the end of the week too, we got Fast Friday. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it depends on what day. I try to figure out what I'm wearing because I don't want to be. It's been times where I've been rushing out the house and I was like, man, the fit don't look right. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't really yeah. fucking with it. So probably that right there. And then you know, family time with my my daughter in town. We we'll spend that. We we'll play with the Barbies and stuff like that. Don't tell nobody about that. But I play with the Barbies. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta bit. do what you gotta do, man. <laughs> play with the Barbies a little bit. Uh, family time. My mama come. You know what I'm saying. I'll, God willing, hopefully my brother can come soon. You know, I'll be going out to Dallas and messing yeah. with him a little bit. But the off day, I try to get as much done. Then on top of that work stuff, you know, like you working on your off day. This is yeah. probably something you love to do. But still, on your off day, when you could be doing X, Y, Z, you dedicate more time to something. So I try to give thirty percent to all the things I got going on outside of football too. So despite all the other stuff, like what would the ideal off day oh, shit. look for Diggs? You know, we got a lot of stuff that we like we have to do. Mm. You know, it's not really a, a off day, but if you really had an off day, what would it, the ideal off day look for look like for Stephon if, Diggs? If we could teleport, if I could teleport, I would fly somewhere, give me some, I don't know, chicken parmesan, give me a whole lot of sun. Cause that's one thing about Buffalo. You might not get a lot of sun. We've had a good season so far going into October. <laughs> But you won't get a lot of sun, so I try to get some sun somewhere, um, maybe a margarita or something. I don't know. I don't know but it's sure. all good, man. I, I like margaritas too. Plaza Azul, Reposado, man. Yeah. Plaza Azul, Reposado, yeah. margarita. I love yeah. it, man. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. That's it, bro. What? What? So did you did you watch the Monday Night Football game? Or no, we had to. You know, it's Chiefs. We got the Chiefs coming up this week. Gotta they played the Raiders. You watched it last night. What was your takeaways from it? Uh, I mean, in the anticipating in the beginning of the game. Raiders came out with the right mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were running the ball efficiently. Josh Jacobs is one of the, in my opinion, he one of the so best good. backs. He, so he was running so hard. They had an early four from one. They went up top. They went in with the right mindset as far as like winning. I feel like towards the end of the game, they got a little bit away from running the ball, yeah. which had them su- gave them some success. Um, but I see like that crucial fourth down play. Um, it was kind of similar to the one they had early on in the game. They were damn near went zero coverage. Everybody was one on one, and they had a little bit of a miscue. But just throughout that game, the Raiders had the right mindset. It was a, I guess it was a little controversial with that going for two yeah. compared to kicking the ball. But uh, you know, as a coach, you do what you think feels right, especially going in with that mindset, that aggressive mindset. Shit, they went for it on fourth and one, scored a touchdown. Yeah. Why not? Why not be aggressive? But. You know, it, it could have went. It could have went anyway. I think you know. Obviously, the Chiefs are a good team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying uh, Travis Kelsey had four touchdowns. I, I didn't he miss did. that. That's very impressive. And Patrick Mahomes is obviously Patrick Mahomes, and they have a good defense. You know that their DC has a, like, he has that mindset of a Rolodex defense. Like, yeah, yeah, he runs a lot of different stuff. Try to confuse the quarterback. Try to you know trick you on what you see. So it's gonna be big for us to really hone in on what we see. Get out the huddle fast so Josh can least all right this is what I think I'm seeing you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. this is what we're in so we can play fast but I did watch the game the game was exciting that was some exciting it was football. I've been in the AFC West for 11 and a half years man mm-hmm. so you know I remember those teams before the like the Derek Carr and yeah. I, I remember the teams before like Justin Herbert and before like a Patrick Mahomes so I'm gonna always be a fan of the AFC West so whenever it's you know AFC West games yeah, on so. the telly bro, I'm gonna watch it man and I'm a huge Derek Carr fan like yeah and everybody might not know that but I am a huge Derek Carr fan. I, I've I've gotten to know him throughout the years at the Pro Bowl. You know, obviously playing against him, and he's just he's such a great quarterback, and he has so much talent, mm-hmm. and he's really truly a good guy off yeah. the field. You know, some guys you know you can't really say that. Not like you know him off the yeah. field, but I like I know Derek Carr yeah. off the field, man. And he is he is genuinely a good guy, man. And you just want to see success for those right. guys. So when I'm watching the game, and I'm seeing Derek Carr go off, and then I I might I'm gonna take a step back when I watch the Broncos game. Mm-hmm. Like, was it two weeks ago? I watched the Broncos game, and Derek Carr is running for 20 yards, yeah, 20, 35 yards, 35 yards scramble. Like, he doesn't do that. Yeah. So, when I saw him do that, it, it showed me like he had an opportunity to go out of bounds, but he like veered back in and cut up the field. And instead of sliding, he like dope. I'm like, yeah, bro, dope. like, this is a different like Derek Carr. Derek Carr, he really wants this win. And I think they was, I think they might have been 0 and 3 by the time. So, he's like, bro, he really wants that win. Like, he got Devontae Adams. Like, he yeah. got, he trying to prove, like, hey, like, this is the team, like, I'm going to take it over. So when I saw him do that, I was like, okay, like, Derek Carr's back. Yeah, yeah. You know, he had, took a, he had took a step back from scrambling and I stuff after he had got hurt. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I think that was uh, – I forgot what game it was, but I think one of the offensive linemen, like, fell on his leg, I broke remember. his leg. He kind of, like – he kind of, like, took a step back. I get it. But to see him, like, hey, like, I'm back running and stuff, I'm like, okay, Derek Carr really wants yeah. to win. So going into this game, you know, I see Derek Carr, same – you know, play fake, going Dog. deep to Devontae. Dog. Like, he's patient back there. Even though they got a great pass rush yeah. with, with Chris Jones and, and Frank Clark, both of them are my going guys. Crazy, going crazy. I and to see, see Derek Carr, like, bro, like, you know, he, he composed and he really trying to win the game and they get up by 17 points. I'm like, okay, like, they're going to win this game. But at the same time, I was like, bro, Patrick Mahomes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't never count him out. 
And he started like, you know, they, he started doing things that Patrick Mahomes does. You know, they started making these making these little catches, you know, <laughs> flying Tom. But then Max Crosby had a crazy day too. He had yeah, two sacks. Yeah, Chandler Jones. Chandler Jones, was, Chandler Jones was in his lap all day too. Mm-hmm. So I was like, damn, like, you know, the Raiders really might pull this one off. But slowly, like, see Patrick Mahomes, like, yeah. claw his way back in there. Travis Kelsey, like you said, four, touch. four touchdowns, 25 yards, seven, seven a receptions. A hell of a player. A hell of a player. I yeah. think, just like you said, like, the Raiders, in my opinion, was is a team that their record won't reflect how good they yeah, are. Yeah, 100%. You know what I'm saying? They'll lose some games and then they yeah. could, they one of those teams that probably could still be in the mix. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they, they win their first game, they, they beat the Chargers. Uh, they are they one and four. They 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 lost a couple of games and they beat the Broncos. Oh, I know they beat okay. the Broncos. Well, sure. I know like it's from a seven point differential or something that they talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I know they beat the Broncos. I know they beat the Broncos. Sure. They uh, they uh they uh they actually a good team. Like I saw them talk about it today on I think on Sports Center or something. But they were just saying that their record won't reflect how good they are yeah. because they have talent wise they got they all do. the pieces they defensively do. and offensively and the losses that they had they were they were like close they they haven't been blown out of that it's been it's all came down to like one possession and even the game last night it came down to like you know that that call with Devonte adams and i'm sitting there watching the game I'm like bro that's a catch you got it with one hand feet in it could have went it could have went both ways and then the next play after that the fourth down you know they run into like they run into each other. I, you know I'm not a receiver. I like to think I'm. I like to think I'm a raw receiver. <laughs> but I saw Devontae go inside. He's probably supposed to take an outside release. I was thinking that because it's either he was supposed to take an outside release, or Hunter Renfro wasn't supposed to go outside because they was what we call pissing in the same coke bottle, yeah. and that's why they ran into each other because he had a corner, he had a post. You don't know in my in my mind Tay might have been right and then. I don't know. I don't know who my it looked like Derek Carr. He know. threw it. It looked like he threw the, it the post. Like he, he was throwing the post to Devontae in the yes. middle of the field. Yeah. Yes. So he was he was imagining them being there. I knew that. Well, man, like you know, I, I wanted to. I wanted the Raiders to win for obvious reasons. Um, yeah. You know, of course, all those guys are my guys, man. Devontae Adams, uh, Derek Carr. You know, all those guys. I wanted them to win, obviously, because we playing the Chiefs this week. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? We playing the Chiefs this week. Well, maybe this, <laughs> this might be even better. You know, um, Derek. Uh, you know, uh, not Derek Carr, but. Travis Kelsey, over the years, bro, like I got to know Travis Kelsey yeah. too. Swaggy off the cool field. Cool Swaggy off the field. Like that's that's that he's become he's become one of my guys. I know like at the beginning of my career, like we had like our, our little like online like spats and mm-hmm. whatever I said, like, you know, the fake ground cast. I think it was the fake ground cast or anything like that. But I'm here to say on the ble- the BR um podcast, the Vaughn cast, like mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey. Has created his own lane. There we go. You know, and I'm an Aries, so I can admit whenever I'm wrong. Like <laughs> you in the signs, you Aries. I mean, I'm I'm in the like I'm in the like my signs and oh, like you, know, you know the people around. I don't, I'm not like a horoscope guy, but I know like my signs. I'm an Aries. Like mm-hmm. Aries get along with other Aries, Leos and like Sag. Yeah, like, I was I'm a Sag. That's how I know. Yeah. I'm like this. I get along with Aries. Yeah. Like especially, I'm not that much in the signs, but the but the people that I'm around, they accuse you. Like even my assistant, she loves signs. She'll tell me like, "Oh, you don't get along with this person because they're this." And I'm like, "This damn." I thought yeah. they was kind of cool, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm be, I think it's I think it's I think it's dope. To, you know, like have like at least something that you you know you can have, especially on like any friendship or relationship mm-hmm. that you might have. But I'm here to say like. I was wrong. Like Travis Kelsey is in his own lane. <laughs> he's obviously a Hall of Famer. He, he's he's created his own lane. Him and Patrick Mahomes have a. Uh, let me think about it. Him and Patrick Mahomes have a uh, have a have a connection or a relationship that has never been seen before here in the league. And Travis, you know, I, I give it to you, man. Like, hopefully, we can get you on the BR podcast. You know, <laughs> one of these days, the Voncast. One of these days, man. But. You have created a, a Hall of Fame career, man, and kudos to you, man. And I'll see you this week. Maybe we can talk about it before the game, maybe even during the game. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. But during that game... Trying to block you. you do, yeah, you know, I mean, you know... You know, you know, I, mean, you know <laughs> you know, I don't want to create no, you know, no bulletin board material, but yeah, you, know, you can try to block me, whatever you want to do. <laughs> whatever you want to do, man. I know if, he, if they had to pick, like, uh, covering, Va- covering Travis Kelsey or... Blocking. Uh, Va- uh, blocking or Travis Kelsey blocking me, I'm, you know, I just... You know, I, I'm sure it'd be 50-50. Yeah, there we go. Well, I'm sure it'd be 50-50. Right. Roll the well, dice. Man. But if it was reversed and Travis Kelsey had to cover me. I don't know. It's a I, I don't know, man. I don't know because in my heart, like, I'm fast. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I'm fast. I can kick. I can do all that stuff. So, <laughs> back to the game, like, it was obviously some controversial, like, things that happened in the game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's roughing the passer. Not only the roughing the passer call on Chris Jones, um, but you know the roughing the capacity call on on, uh, on Tom Brady and, and uh, Grady Jarrett, yeah, too. Like both of those was crazy. What do you what do you think about those? It was tough because 
I mean, I know Big Chris, man, and obviously, like, from visual, it wasn't rough in the past. I've seen people get hit a lot harder, yeah. but you've seen this, I mean, specifically this year, you've seen a lot of guys, like, push a guy or shove a guy, and you barely really hit them. You feel yeah. like, in the past, that would have never been a call, but they've been kind of throwing a, trying to protect the quarterbacks a lot this year. He tried, I mean... Being, I don't know how big Chris Jones is, yeah. but I imagine he's close to three hundred pounds. Yeah, he kind of braced himself too with his. He left try to like try to keep him. He try to keep yeah. him landing right on top of him while he's trying to take the ball from him. It's a lot to ask from uh, a D lineman, even though Chris is crazy athletic. Like he trying to strip the ball, he trying not to land on somebody. Yeah. It's a lot to ask from somebody playing football in general. But then like it's just so controversial with the calls to see that game could have went another way. It could have, yeah, and it could have went solely just because of that play. Yeah, like then we had a turnover. Like and then this is just like I don't know, man. Like. I love me some TB12, but like Grady, my guy, and I don't really see much. And my dog tried to kick him. My dog Tom Brady tried to kick him. I mean, if you if I'm on a team, you want to see a quarterback get mad, he tried to, he tried tried to, to get kick him. him. I love Tom Brady. You know, I got a special relationship with Tom Brady, but he was he was obviously mad. Yeah. But I think the league put out a memo not too long ago, like falling on a quarterback won't Sling. be allowed. And he just all he really did was like sling the guy, like Tom Brady didn't you know, hit his head or anything like that. And I'm all about player safety. Like, you know, if anybody that's watching this, play, this, this podcast, y'all know I'm all about player safety and how to, and trying to make the game as safe as possible because I want my son to play this game. You know, I want other kids to fall in love with this game the same way I fell in love with this game. And the only way we can get there is to make it as, as safe as possible. And I get, like, you gotta we got to take care of the quarterbacks. But at the same time, like, we got to be able to, like, judge these calls or review these calls. But that's a slippery slope, too. Because mm-hmm. once we start, like, Reviewing stuff, if everything is reviewable, then like, I mean, why we need to, why we need the refs, you know what, why we need the refs. So obviously, so obviously they got to put in the call like, okay, if it's a rough and a pass a call, it should be reviewable. But they they did the same thing with pass interference too, didn't they? Like a couple years ago, they took away, they had to pass interference. But even that, that'd be crazy. In the future, you might see no refs. Refs might not have a job anymore. Everything would be reviewable. They'd just be watching it from up top. That'd be crazy. But I think they had pass interference call, but even then, like. As a ref, if I made a call, whether you think it's controversial or not, they were really pretty much sticking with the call. I probably got reversed like once or twice. Yeah. But I mean, I, and that's what I do, man. I, you know, I, you know, I, I sat the quarterback. That's like that's like my my main job. That's what I do. I, I got to come into the game. Of course, we got to win. That's the most important thing. And I got to sack the quarterback. Like this, is what I do. And just my just my point on it is like. It's got to be reviewable, but that's always a slippery slope. Yeah. Like Diggs has said, it's a slippery slope because. You know, they, they can put it in and then not get called. And then why are we, why are we stopping the game for yeah. this? But, you know, we do a great job of making the game safer. We do a great job of making the game more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely something that we should review in the off season. And we got, we got Michael Parsons right here. This is my guy. We got Michael Parsons right here. He said, we won't call this, but we are caught rough in the pass or laugh out loud. Can we focus in and protect def- defensive players too? I don't and think it, they care about y'all. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, they have to, bro. They have to, like. So, for instance, like the most valuable position, the most valuable position in football is, of course, the quarterback. Yeah. And then you go to who affects the quarterback most, like the pass rush. Yeah, yeah. Michael Parsons is coming up. Like his contract, bro. His contract. We're gonna have to give him fifty-five a million, million dollars. Fifty-five million dollars a year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, yeah. it's 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 coming. Like it's coming. Like and if you if we're gonna protect the quarterbacks, we gotta protect the pass rushers. Yeah. Then you gotta protect the wide receivers. And then the offensive line too. Like everybody has a, a joint. All three, all four of those positions, they make the game, like, oh. like what it is. The pass rushers, the O line, the pass blockers, the wide receivers catch the ball from the quarterbacks. Like those four positions, and the corners too. You can't leave. You no, can't, can't leave. leave you can't leave out. Can't leave the CVs out. But the corners are. That's the most difficult position in all of sports. You think so? I think it is. I think. Give it me is. your top three hardest positions. In all of you sports. Said DB is in all of sports or just nah, just football right now. So I think uh, from a mental standpoint, obviously it has to be quarterback because the good quarterbacks, like you, you, you processing information like real time, you seeing this, you got to, you know, be able to anticipate this route. A quarterback, that's the most valued position okay. in our sport. Okay. Next, one, one. I think difficulty will have to be cornerback because they're guarding guys like you. They got guards like you and like other talented receivers around the league, and I'm sitting here at five yards. Maybe you know I might press him, or I might be off by ten, and I can't touch the guy. I can't hold the guy. I gotta like sit here and wait on him, and I actually, I gotta react to him each and every move that he do. I gotta react to him, and I can't touch him. Then the ball is in the air, 
And then I don't even know the ball is in there. I got to judge you by yeah. looking at the ball, and I got to turn around. <laughs> you just got to be athletic. You got to have hips. You got to have feet. You got to have everything. Um, and then number three, I'm not going to say my position and your position. Was, <laughs> because they said, because they, I had my guy, Akeem Tlaib, he told me a long time ago, he's like, bro, your position easy, bro. Like, you basically a wide receiver on defense. You just rush, yeah. rush, rush. Yeah. The offensive line don't know what you're doing. Like, I, okay, I, I, I get it. And then receiver, you know, you got the, you got the quarterback throwing you the ball. You got to have a great quarterback. Yeah. You know, whoop de whoop. But I, I take a step back and I would say. Don't say O'Lama. I, I, bro, I have don't to. Bro. Say it's tough. I argue bro. with them every day. It's tough, bro. They're going to listen is. to this and be like, Mom said it was. It, was it really wrong. is, bro. It is, a, it is a tough position, bro. I'm telling you. Because I'm going against the guys, and I, and I, got, a, I got it from a different And you do a great job, so how, how, I got how it from hard a is it? Perspective. Really? I could get blocked all fucking game. And then two plays out of the game, I, you know, bust a move or like slip the guy, and I get a sack force fumble, then everybody going crazy. And this guy had to block. He had to really be on top of all of my movements and react. And he's a hundred pounds bigger than me. That's why it's not hard. Like, <laughs> he's a hundred pounds bigger you than me. Two plays and <laughs> you balling. Like I always say that the hardest position is quarterback. One, we went one for one. That next position was definitely not. Um, they say corner, but like I don't say corner. Why I don't say corner is because we all grew up playing tag. Yeah. And you had to run away from somebody, or you had to kind of you know catch up with them to tag them. Yeah. I kind of. Equate that tag to DB a little <laughs> bit, so they gonna hate me for saying that. So I was, I never go cornerback second. I usually go like receiver or something. Like it's you know, hard to get open and catch the ball. It is, it is, it is, bro. It is, bro. And you're going against athletic guys. That some of these guys Real play good. receiver. Real some of these guys don't play receiver too. My little brother. Some of these guys know like what, like what you think, and like it's honestly any position in football is tough. Like yeah. this is, this is a, this is a. I don't want to say like a man's game because obviously like women can play this game too. It is a tough challenging like game and um from the ground up from all week from preparing for this game from the mental element of this game to uh you know the the um the taxes like phys- physically that you have to pay week in and week out Mentally, it yeah. is it is a tough game and all these positions that you play especially at a high level especially at a at a level like Diggs or like Josh Allen or like Micah Parsons like it takes a lot to get there you know so I got to give respect to all the positions yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just had I just had to talk about it. It's it's a, no it's argument. a you know, it's it's it, you know, I'm not I'm not I won't say like just for the sake of our conversation, like, you know, I just say like all of these positions is tough, but in my opinion, like, you know, quarterback, mm-hmm. you know, um corner. I'm on the Vaughn cast. And offensive shit. lineman. <laughs> and offensive <laughs> lineman. Um and uh what was what was the question I had? Has the way you play defender changed since you came into the league because of the way they make calls? Honestly, yeah, like it changed. Before when I first got here, you could just, I could just do whatever to the quarterback. Yeah. Like I could just grab him, sling him down. Like I could do whatever I want. Um, but now, like it's changed. Like they put such an emphasis on protecting the quarterback, obviously because, you know, out of thirty-two teams, thirty of these guys are like the face the of the league. Right, all thir- all thirty-two of these guys are the face yeah. of our league. They're the future of our league. So obviously, you got to protect these guys. But yeah, it has changed. And for me, like I put so much emphasis on the ball. Like yeah. if I get a free, if I if I dip a guy and I got a free shot at the quarterback, like I'm not thinking like just blow. Yeah, I'm not thinking just like bro, just tackle the shit. I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking like that. I'm thinking like get the ball. Let me get the ball out. Because I, I think like once you like put a focus on the ball and not actually like the player. Yeah. Yeah. It changes like now. Of course, like if I can't get the ball, I just got to tackle the guy. But for me, what has always helped me. Like avoid like roughing the passer calls or and like anything crazy versus the quarterback is just I focus on the ball. That is the most important thing of a football game. I've seen it in the Super Bowl. Yeah, so I, that's what I'm thinking about, bro. I'm going after the ball, bro. So yeah, it it, it has changed the way you play. I got a question though, like, so because the, like you said, protecting y'all, but at the same time, it puts you in a very vulnerable state for like a quarterback, like those mobile quarterbacks, yeah. like a guy like Josh or a yeah. guy like Patrick Mahomes who. He not just getting tackled like a normal guy. Like, yeah. You ain't just bringing Josh down by just tackling no, him like yeah. how you could probably tackle a smaller quarterback. I feel like I got a question. Like, do you feel like they should make it some parameters? Like, if I got two hands on him, he shouldn't be able to throw this ball away. Or he shouldn't be able to do what a lot of the good ones do. Yeah, they like just shake off a guy and big try bands, to. Yeah, Josh, exactly. Josh do it all the exactly. time. Yeah, I mean, no, it's always going to have to be like me. I got to put the guy on the ground and get the ball out. I think it'll always be there. And I think this rough, I think honestly, we kind of. Overreacting to these roughing the passer calls because like it's been two crazy ones like in this, but I think over time like it'll settle down. Like our competition committee will figure it out, and um, yeah, I've been in the league twelve years, bro. And like things like this, they always like they always like work themselves out. Like yeah. any safety issues that we have in our league, they always like work themselves out. 
And I think that's just where we at. Like this, it'll work. It everything will work itself out. Mm -hmm. And I'm a pass rusher, and I'm going at the quarterbacks each and every week. And I just know, like, you know, shit like this, it will work itself out. But you know, this last week we got we got a dub. Yeah. And it's all about dubs. It's all about dubs in the league. We got a a big dub over the Steelers. Um, Josh Allen had a career day, 224 yeah. yards. That's a mad. I think he had that in the first half. He ended with like 424, right? Oh, yeah. He said he had 424 yards, oh, my man. bad. 424 man. yards. And he didn't even play the third quarter. So he would have probably had like a. Oh, yeah. It, it probably been some mad shit. He probably, he, it would have easily broke like. Jesus Christ. He would have easily broke 500 yards at least, you know? Do you, in my opinion, this is my question to you. From watching Josh Allen before you were on this team, did you think he was as good as he is right now? I knew he was good. Um, we played we played uh, the Bills in 2019. I think mm -hmm. we played the Bills in 2019. You was on this. You was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. played the Bills in 2019. I think so. Yeah, yeah, you were, you were, <laughs> <laughs> you were, bro. We played the Bills sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we played the Bills in 2019, and I I just remember like going against Josh and him. He was running around. And usually, like quarterback would run around and step out of bounds, and Josh like ran around and took that bitch like 60 yards. I'm like, bro, like who does that, bro? Like, <laughs> What are you doing? Like, like he went crazy that game. So I knew, it. and then like over time, just me being a fan of the league, and like eventually, I want to be like a GM. So you got to pay attention to college and like other players around the league. So I seen Josh's uh, evolution throughout yeah. all this time, and I saw like, in particularly like last season, like he just continued to take these steps. So I knew like Josh was Josh Allen, mm -hmm. but seeing it up close and personal, like hearing practice, like being around him in the locker room, like fucking. Uh, seeing him like kicking at his house playing Boo Ray yeah. and like being around, like just being around him in general, it made me, it made me really realize like, hey, this guy is like special. This is not just like yeah. one of those. This is not one of those fluke years. What do you? How you feel about Josh? Hate of course, him. of course, we hate got him. you know we got this hate coming him. up in a segment. So. Hate him, can't stand him. <laughs> okay. uh, Josh got one of those like fairy tale ass stories, bro. Yeah. Like it's kind of weird, but you know, a kid out of Wyoming, big arm. You know, what I'm saying going in the draft and then. His first couple of years, he had some success. And then, like, I kind of knew about Josh already because they came and kicked our ass in Minnesota one year. Like, you know, we had we were 17-point favorites going into the game, and we got the bye week right after. Yeah. So we got our mindset on shit, like, Buffalo coming. We're going, all right, we're going to walk them. And we go to the bye. So they came in. They came in with a right mindset. I think they went up two scores, like, in the first or second quarter. I'm like, this, hold, hold the fuck up. Hold up. What's yeah. going on? And then I was like, this shit, like, y'all better get y'all shit together. They about to beat the shit out of us. And then next thing you know, like we're down like twenty points or something crazy. And I'm like, this damn, we about to really about to really lose to the Bills. And I'm like, shit, well, game's over now. By week, here I come. And then that was my only thing I had registered in my brain as I was about to get traded. So as I'm about to get traded and I had the teams to choose from, I was just I had a I had a clear image of Josh Allen in my brain. And then like they had went to the playoffs against Houston the year before. And like he had a hell of a game. Like he like caught a touchdown, like a pass, or he threw him a touchdown. He had threw some shit, he had ran. And I was like, I don't know what y'all talking about, but he a winner. Like he yeah. a dog. Yes, yes. So I uh when I got traded or whatever, I had met him in the offseason. I'm like, damn, he kinda you know how you meet somebody yeah. and it's like you might not like immediately like click, yeah. but it's like damn, like he cool as shit. Like I could, you know what I'm saying? Like this 100%. shit all right. So I kind of went in with that mindset and then moving forward as the season started progressing, I was like, this shit, like Josh. Josh, cool as shit. Like, we would play the game together. Like, little kid shit. Shit that adults usually don't typically yeah. do. And I was like, damn, like, I, I fuck with Josh. And then, like, as the season went on, we had a lot of success together. And him throwing me the ball and shit like that. Like, I owe him a lot of credit to my success, uh, especially going into a new new team where, you know what I'm saying, a lot of, sometimes shit don't go right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And this is one of those stories that, well, it did. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I, when I first and foremost, I always thank God. But then I always give a lot of credit to Josh. Like, even that first year, he won't tell you this, but... That first year, I felt like uh, I felt like he he kind of like changed my career to the point where I wanted to be. I wanted to blossom and I wanted to turn into one of the top receivers in the league, and he helped with that. So for Christmas, I had got him a little. Uh, I had bought him like a watch, like a nice little, a nice little watch. Yeah. A little uh, what was it? It was something. It was something small. I asked him about it. I bought him a little watch for Christmas. He was happy about it, but it was just something <laughs> that I was like, "Shit, bro, you you were part of my success, so I wanted to show my gratitude to him." And you know, by not only that, just getting open to catching the ball for him because my job is to keep him looking good too. Yeah, one, bro, one hundred percent. Like I, I told you, like I like to play GM sometimes, and I like to mm -hmm. just think like, like you said, like just because it's supposed to go right, like it never go right. But when I seen like. When I saw you like get traded here, like with Josh Allen, I saw like the jumps he was making, bro. I was like, bro, you about to take him. I think that's you on Instagram. I'm like, hell bro, you yeah, in a good spot. Was, yeah, hell I was yeah. like, bro, you in a good spot. Like Josh, like, bro, Josh, like, 
to see that that's all he really needed. Like he didn't have like. You know, he had great receivers, but, mm-hmm. you know, a Stefan Diggs, bro. Like, that's all That's all they really needed, bro. And to see y'all, like, take off like that, bro. It's, it's, Appreciate that, bro. bro it's, it's fucking crazy, bro, for sure. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, that's why I say it's a fairy tale story. Like, if, if it could happen this way for everybody, I wish it would. You know what I'm saying? Especially this league that we in now, I feel like it's different than, like, 10 years ago, 10, yeah. 15 years ago. Because you see guys ride things out in their career, like, as far as, like, being with the same team yeah. or just, like, just little shit like that. So, for me, it was, like, really... At this point, you take control of your life. You're the CEO of your life. You yeah. run it how you see fit. And if you're not happy, you got to make the necessary changes. You got to. And if you see more for yourself or you want just some, some type of different role, like you see a guy like Minka Fitzpatrick who was in Miami originally, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Hell of a player. And he just felt like, damn, like I'm not going to blossom in this situation. I need a different situation. Mm-hmm. He went to the Steelers and he's one of the best safeties in the league. He went, took another step. Yeah, Miami had sure. him at corner, you know what I'm sure. saying? So it's just like little things like that you can kind of see. Yeah, some guys, sometimes it didn't work out for guys who wanted to go other places, but uh, I'm one of them. And, you know, as an example, Mika Finch practice, just guys go in and say, man, I need something different. And yeah. you shouldn't, you should never feel wrong for that. Never, bro. Like, you should always, bro. If you, if you, I would, I'm always a fan of like betting on yourself. I know mm-hmm. we talked about Lamar Jackson and, you know, the things that he did, man. So that just fall in line with what you just said, bro. You got to yeah. bet on yourself. You got to yeah. believe in yourself. But back to the Steelers game, like, Shit got chippy, bro. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Shit got a little. Shit, shit got up, chippy, bro. bro. Like, <laughs> like your reaction to see like Kenny Pickett like put yeah. push Shaq Lawson like that. I think, from my point of view, it's kind of like similar to the Ken Dorsey situation when they saw him like, yeah, like go a little bit. Ah, uh, I liked it. Shit, he not my quarterback though, yeah. so he's still the ops. But as he, <laughs> <laughs> as I saw him do it, I was like, this, that takes a lot of guts from a quarterback position to push a D line, especially 100%. especially one like that, like. And you know Shaq ain't no sucker. Like, out of all the people, you play Shaq, Shaq Lawson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's, it showed, like, he, he tough. Like, he, I mean, and his teammates came and backed him. So, you got to, one, give him some respect. And, two, be like, all right, he might got some, I always say, they got some shit with him. Like, yeah. He ain't your regular little run in the mill. Take it. I'm going to just take it on the chin. Yeah. I, when, I said, when I saw it, bro, I was like, okay. You know, they 30, I always like to look at both perspectives. Like, okay, mm-hmm. they, they down 38 to, to 3. And I don't think it's so much about like the hit that Shaq had on him. I think it was so much like, hey, this is our score or the situation that we in. It's not acceptable. Mm-hmm. Like this, this ain't gonna be us. Like this is my first start, but I'm gonna show y'all. Like I don't, I'm not accepting this shit. Like I'm gonna take. Like this ain't, this ain't good with me. And then not only that play, like the scuffle uh, versus uh, when when um, when James Daniels had pushed Hamlin. Like yeah. they went crazy over that shit too. I think that was just another like case of like. Bro, like we not we not gonna accept this shit. I know what this I know what the score look like, bro. Mm-hmm. But this shit ain't gonna fly. And I was on the sideline right here, bro. I, I came up. Of course, I'm not gonna get no scrum. Like I don't like to say I'm too old for shit, but <laughs> I'm too old for that <laughs> shit. Roll bro. an ankle or something. Now I'm over. Bro, it's 300 pounds. You got you got you got tw- you got fucking 12 300 pound plus guys right here from both teams. Like going around pushing guys and doing. I'm not, bro. I'm not getting in that, yeah. bro. Like I love all my guys. I love my colleagues. But I'm not getting in that. But I walked up after, and I was like, bro, what are y'all doing? And I think it was Cole on the Steelers team. I was like, bro, it was on the Bills, like, mic'd up today. I was like, bro, what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? He looked at me. He said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me. He said, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, bro. Like, I didn't know what was going on either. I, I, know I, saw, I know I saw my guy Dan Moore, though. He, like, slapped the guy. Like, he, like, ah. <laughs> he, like, he, like, held it back, and he, like, slapped the guy, bro. It was so funny, bro. And I... You know, at this point in my career, bro, you like look at the silver lining and everything, bro. Mm-hmm. When everybody started fighting, I was like, bro, these, bro, these young guys crazy, bro. It's, it's crazy, bro. I think that's an example of Buffalo too, though. Like, like as our team, you see that video. Like our team don't be having that shit. No. Like all our youngers, they they on that. They trying to see what's going on, make sure everything, everything. Like, real, it's, it's something that my but like I'm too old for that shit. Like somebody pushed me the wrong way, I was <laughs> ankle roll or something. I can't have that. Yeah. I can't have that. But I love them. And I know I, I digress a little bit, but. You know, I want to talk fashion a little bit. Right. Like, been on the fashion, been on the fashion shit forever, bro. Mm-hmm. And you know, I got Kyler Mary. He wore this. This uh, I, I don't we know what it. it was. He wore this green, this green, uh, this green pantsuit. Let me see what's before the game. On. And like, oh, that's that's Dior. Well, I, bro, I didn't know what a, it was. Not yeah. to throw the label out, but that's Dior. I actually seen it when I was in the Dior store, and it was. Uh, I mean, I I don't. I will wear some. I will wear it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe y'all don't like it, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, his fits usually be great. They be this, great. This, I like. I like this fit too. It's it's not for everybody. I feel like it's eclectic, and you know what I'm saying? As long as he being himself, I'm gonna embrace it. But I actually saw this 
And if I'm not mistaken, it is Dior. And it, it should. Man, when I seen it. when I seen Khaled put it on, bro, I was like, bro, this is something I would wear too. Like exactly. You know, I like wearing I like wearing shit that like everybody, you know what I'm saying, can't pull off. Like pull up Von fit the Beyonce fit. <laughs> right now. We had that on there last it week. Was we had it on last week. Uh, right. Who didn't like it on the team? Somebody was talking that shit. That was Tim Soto. Like, Tim Soto ain't he like it. But, you know, people don't be knowing, bro. They don't be knowing, bro. With Kyler, yeah. Kyler, bro, I'm like, bro, like, this is hard, bro. Like, this is hard. And some people were saying, like, if you wearing this to a football game, like, how could you be focused? Honestly, what, what you wear to a football game has nothing to do about how you play. Honestly, I feel like you should dress nice because Deion, Sa- Deion Sanders said it a long time ago, like, if you dress good, you play good. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you play good, they pay good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like Kyler, bro, he he just embody he embodying that. And I feel like if we was if we was rappers or singers or entertainers in any sport, I mean of any like type of field or genre, mm-hmm. our concert or our our biggest day of the week is game, game day. Yeah. So whenever you're going to game day, you should always dress to the T. You should always take advantage of the, of the spotlight and the platform to go out there and dress nice and. You know, I, I like I like Colin Mary's fit. I've always liked your your fits, and I've liked the bills for everybody. You know, I always like people, you know, dressing dressing up and 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 putting on something that you ain't never really seen before. Cam Newton did it forever. 100%. Like you just you just see stuff like you you able to like take this platform and like really make it your own. Because whenever you dress, you really um you really can like promote. You can really like promote yourself. You can show who you are without saying who you are. You know what I'm saying? So I'm all, expression. Yeah. I'm always for like you know guys dressing like that. I see. I see you. I see you on a daily basis. I'm like this, because like when it comes down to style, people don't really understand. Especially when it comes down to eclectic. Not every, not everybody's going to agree with what you're yeah. wearing, but that's why they're not wearing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm like saying. I feel like shit. Long as you being yourself, you know what I'm saying. You know when somebody being themselves like. Like for example, I seen you rock the car hard shit a long, long time ago. Yeah. You could tell, like, but you also kind of grew up on that too. Yeah, like that was just like that's your swag. So when people being themselves, like you can always, I can always thoroughly like be like, I'm gonna embrace that. I respect that because you being yourself, like your style is your style. That shit not for everybody. Well, my fashion icon is is Lil Wayne, right? Oh yeah. And I've been a I've been a I've been a Lil Wayne fan since since I was a little kid, mm-hmm. and I saw Lil Wayne dressing. You know, he just really put on. He really put on shit that he liked. He put on shit that he feel like is is cool and, and shit that he. It might be the, whatever. It might be expensive. It might not be expensive. It might be uh, expensive like hat, or it might just be like a two dollar hat from somewhere else. He wears shit that he liked. And when I saw when I saw him as a little kid, that always like was my inspiration mm-hmm. for fashion. Like I'm just gonna wear what I like, not necessarily thinking about brands. Like it could be a it could be a high fashion brand, or it could be just. You know, a, a brand from the dollar store. Oh, I'm gonna like, wear what I'm gonna wear like shit that I think is cool, man. And I always enjoy like people wearing shit that they think is cool. Too. Money don't money don't give you style. It don't because a lot of people with bread too. They, I know a lot they had a they had a Louis V hat, yeah. Louis V shirt, Louis oh. V pants, Louis V shoes. They don't make it. They don't make it like they don't make it like swag. Like just because you know, just because it is what it is, don't make it like swag. How you wear it's how you wear a lot of shit too. Like I could make this hat like. This hat might not be much, but the way I wore it, it'd be like this. Damn, that hat probably super expensive. No, I just got this from the gas station. Bro, and a big and a and a and a big example of that is like my guy uh, DeAndre Hopkins and my guy Jamal Adams. Like, they go to Walmart and Very like chill swag. They go to Walmart and put some shit together. Like, and look, they look like out the men's section. Yeah, they damn. look like damn. What is this? Like, that's what it's about, bro. Like, I and I seen those guys do that. Like, I like I like I wanted to like you know really like. Empower them, like bro, like this is what it's about, bro. It's not always about like high brands, of course, high brands and right. high fashion brands is cool, but like, bro, you want to wear shit that's hard, bro. Yes, there we go. Pull that that's hard. There we go. Beyonce sent me that, man. And you, like, and you gotta have. Listen, not everybody, not only has the will to have it, but you gotta have the confidence. You know what I'm saying? People don't be people lack confidence. That's why they dress like other people. When you're dressing like yourself, that's when you can be like this. Nah, I put this shit on. I got this shit together. And I got from Beyonce. Yeah, I but, ain't but got whether shit. Beyonce I ain't got shit me, from Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce whether Beyonce sent send it to me or not, bro, like I still would like wear this shit because it just it just stand up, bro. And it was raining that day. Like I was just like, bro, like just the rain gonna fall off this shit, bro. And on top of that, <laughs> five, five. like Beyonce it's got the she sent me the whole thing. Yeah. I'm like, bro, like, yeah, I'm a I'm gonna rock this shit. I respect that. But bro, you you've been the king. You always been the king of memes in oh, the NFL, shit. bro. Like you always going viral. It's it's always it's always something like the memes like they love you, bro. And you can't we can't have a social media right, segment man. without looking at some of your most Let me viral see moments. Man. Let me see some, man. <laughs> Embarrass me, all right? 
I don't think nothing embarrassing, bro. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, I, bro. I, I just, it just go with it, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, this is my teammates. And they're partly some of the problem because they'll on the sideline. You don't understand. You've been there. Yeah, yeah. You go into that weird place of. You know what I'm saying? Battling out there on the field, and then you come full circle on the sideline, and then you like, after a big play, I've seen you make some of the biggest plays I've ever seen in my life. Like when you strip strip cam and just like plays like that, you go to another place to be like this. This is what I work hard yeah. for. This is why I feel like I'm him. You know what I'm saying? And him is a new thing. Like, him ain't always been a thing, but like, I mean, we got a lot of people saying they, they him. There's a lot of them, bro. It's only, bro. It's only, it's, it's only, only a couple of him. It's only a couple of him, bro. When I, when I saw you come up, because this obviously was our first, like, real game playing yeah. together, bro. And, you know, Jalen Ramsey, that's, that's one of my guys, too. And I've been around him. And I've seen him, like, ball out. And I've seen him lock down guys. Then when you when you call when you made the plays that you made against Jalen, bro, and before you was in the off the field, because I'm on defense. I'm getting ready to go. And I always like to be down on the offensive side, so I don't yeah. have to walk. I don't have to walk that far. So I'm sitting here, <laughs> and before you even got off the field, bro, you was like, I'm him, I'm him, I'm him. I was like, bro, bro, he really, bro, he, <laughs> bro, he really him, bro, he really him, bro. Like, bro, I, bro, I, bro, I like, I like, I like, I like laugh, bro, because it was just like, it was just so, it was enjoyable to me to like, really like witness like, like greatness, like play oh, by play. Because at my, at my, at my, at my twelve years in the league, bro, like I, like I said, I look for the silver lining in every moment and to start the game, start the season off like that, bro, and like, bro, and Jalen, one of the biggest like trash yeah. talkers there is, yeah, bro, yeah, and yeah. like. You saying like, bro, I'm him coming off like that amplify everybody else around that, bro. you, bro. Like, that shit crazy. And to see like the back end of that, because you started off on the field, yeah. then you walked to the sideline. And then I think the defense is on there, and to see you like keep it going, bro. Like, it ain't. I, I don't think you. I don't think you try to make these these viral moments. They just they just come to you, crazy. bro, and they, they make it even more dope, bro. Crazy. That game was just like a. You know, we went in the mindset like you. You was on the sideline, kind of preaching something I've never seen. That don't blink. That don't blink is real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying and it's something that resonated between everybody, and it was just like those moments, like especially that game, like presumably you know Jalen Ramsey the best corner in the league. Yeah. You know what I'm saying bar none. You know what I'm saying so as a as a competitor, you know, you know what I'm saying you take that as a challenge for yourself. You know what yeah. I'm saying if you if you wanted the best or you the best, you got to show it. You got to show. I got to show it. You know what I'm saying that was more so for me. You know I know Jalen. You know what I'm saying he's a hell of a player too as well. Like he is no no doubt one of the best in the league, and you know. I saw that as like not only something for my teammates, because as a leader on my team, as a captain on my team, I gotta lead my guys the right yeah. way. You know what I'm saying? As cool as I am with people, I still gotta lead my guys the right yeah. way. I'm standing on business at all times. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Giving the energy to my team and that kind of thing too, it kind of like, I think it works for a circle too. It does, bro. It, and like, you know, energy, bro, like that shit rub off. I've been on so many different teams, bro, and the energy, mm -hmm. it really like rub off on your teammates, bro. I, I remember in 2015, like a key to lead, Chris Harris. Mm -hmm. We was all sitting at, at a table, Emmanuel Sanders too. E, and the key was like, hey, like, I'm gonna win MVP. And then like Chris Harris went to like, bro, I'm gonna win MVP. Then like Emmanuel, we was all this sitting. Was the Super Bowl? This is before the Super Bowl. We That's all playing hard. dominoes at the table. That's like we sitting hard. at the table and like, bro, I'm gonna win MVP. And I'm like, man, I don't know what y'all talking about, bro. Like, That's I'm gonna hard. win MVP. Like we was just bullshitting at the table. Damn. And then you go into the game, bro, and we we all had great games. And then for like me to like win like Super Bowl MVP, bro. It wouldn't have got there if it wasn't for Akib, bro. It wouldn't have got there for Akib, like, starting it off. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm, I'm always for, like, energy rubbing off on everybody, bro. You want, like, that's what you want on your team. And all the great Super Bowl teams that I've been on have always possessed yeah. pe players like that, people like that, and moments like that, for yeah. sure. This next one right here is the, the, the emotional post-game after, after Minneapolis. The Minneapolis miracle. And, I, you know, I, I, uh, I like... Uh, Josina Anderson and I saw this yeah, interview. Yeah. I saw this interview, bro. And I can only imagine, like, bro, like, bro, to for the game to be over with and you had this moment like this, bro. Like, I felt, like, I felt, yeah, I felt that, bro, one hundred percent, bro. This, this was real though. Like, it, I don't know, man. I still kind of look back and was like, this damn, because, like, y'all don't know, like, it wasn't really just this moment, but it was like, like, just throughout that season, like, that season was yeah. like, we had a good season, yeah. but like, individually, like, some stuff was going right, some stuff wasn't going right, you know what I'm saying? And you worked so hard, like, I worked so hard to try to make it, like, make it go right, and to see some things go right, and some things don't go right, and then we in the playoffs, we making a playoff push, and then, like, you know, our first game is uh, New Orleans, like, that was a good-ass team that we played, yeah, so, uh... They supposed to win the Super Bowl, 100%, yeah. 100%, they were supposed to win the Super Bowl a couple years, yeah. So for that to happen, like I saw Stephen A. hop on, like I hopped on with Stephen A. probably like after the game or sometime at that point, he was he was telling me that, uh, do you feel like the play was somewhat lucky? 
And at the time, I played it cool. Like, I was like, it's not. Nah. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I feel like X, Y, Z. So looking back on it, like, I wish I would have told him that. Damn, like, one, I wish. Let me see your ass do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just joking. <laughs> but I wish I would have told him that. Like, for real, it was, it was divine my purpose. Like, yeah. that was me just falling in line with my purpose for the things that happened the way they happened. Because uh, it could have it went another way, but it didn't. So, like, I got really emotional after the game because it was like, they don't know how hard that season was for me mentally and for something like that to happen. It was like, this damn God is real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a blessing at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes you just don't know, bro. It's only a, it's only a few that can really like feel that, bro. Like, you know, when I was when I was in that those not it, nothing you know similar to that, but when I had moments like that where I could just reflect, you know, at that moment when you're doing an interview and you're talking to somebody, you just bro instantly taking back to little league football, Damn, college, man. all the hard work yes. that you put in, and it's just like a flashback, like mm-hmm. right before, like all the struggles where people said you couldn't, but somehow you made it happen, mm-hmm. and now you on TV and you just did this, bro. Like it just all hit you once. So I. Like I felt that for real. I, I felt that for sure. But I think the meme had said, they what is, "I want to grow with Josh. I want to grow with Josh Allen and Josh <laughs> Allen." Hey, <laughs> Josh, bro, bro, Josh. I know you feel the same way. We had Josh on the show last week, bro. Mm-hmm. And Josh, bro, he love you to death, bro. Bro, they they be send, they be uh, always sending it to me when like a new album drop or something like that, yeah. like this. I think it was one like I think I just seen it and somebody sent it to me. They said, "When you hear Rihanna about the." Perform at the Super Bowl, and I was like, "This damn!" I, I, I mean, I still might cry with Rihanna. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> bro, sure. This, I mean, this bro, Rihanna is super. Bro. Hopefully, it's hopefully crazy. we can. It's going crazy. Hopefully, we can take a little yeah, break and yeah, go peek out there. See what's going on. No, I'm joking, bro. The kicker, the kicker from the, the kicker from the uh, Bengals did that with our Super Bowl no game. Way. He waited outside and watched Dr. Dre, and uh, I think it was fi- it was fifty. And, no, I watched it on TV. Eminem. No, the kicker from the Bengals didn't go in for halftime. Wow. He he sat out there and like watched the whole thing on the bench. That's hard. Yeah, it's dope. Like I mean, he, he don't got to go in the locker room, do he? Yeah, he got. He ain't got no adjustments. Like you know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm all for it. You know, another thing too that you go viral for are your genuine touchdown celebrations. On oh, my sallies. Yeah, I remember the first, the very first one that I seen was you caught a touchdown and you did like. The, the digs dig, thing, yeah. and then this was back when hitting them folks was like every day, bro. <laughs> I seen it in the Super Bowl. I seen all that shit. That was, that, that, bro. I think you was you still a young bull then. Yeah, like. my first game, my first game uh, when I first go to the tub, man. I oh, was yeah. like, I remember that one like it was yesterday. But this one right here, Steph, it say Stephon Diggs hit that. Oh, that's genuine. We was uh, so all my celebrations come from my teammates. Like if they talk about something during the week, they be like, "Steph, you gotta hit it, you gotta hit." I be like, first of all, I gotta fucking learn the dance move. Like I can't do, I can't just go out there and roll in the dice. So actually, like we uh, choreographed this. Like my teammates just showed me or whatever, and we did something last year against Tennessee. I had to remember. The hardest part is, like if I learn something right now, I could probably like do it. Yeah. But when the game and you gotta you remember, you ain't get that. You never yeah, know you gonna get ain't it. Ain't no yeah. music or nothing. You just kind of gotta do it on the fly. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, bro, wide receivers is different. Bro. I remember, uh, I remember when OBJ hit like the uh, the he, moonwalk. He got some of the best Corey guys. It seemed like his shit. He had them since he was a kid. Bro, he was talking. To, he was talking to Chris Brown. He was talking to Chris Brown in the locker room on Facetime. Talk, they was talking about the moonwalk. Like before he had hit it, I'm like, dang, like wide receivers really put so much yeah, thought into like these celebrations, 100%, 100%. bro. And they always had some great celebrations, bro. That that one was great, bro. Thanks. Like I said before, the the, the uh, Diggs one, bro. Like when I got, I was like, oh yeah, his last name Diggs, right? He digging, right? He hit the folks at the end. <laughs> Thanks, bro. So you chore- you choreographed them, like Hell before? yeah, this was when I was young. When you young, <laughs> celebrating was everything. It wasn't even so much about the touchdown; it was more about the celebration. Yeah, when you're sure. young, but now I'm just I'm just trying to rack up them tuzz now, man. I sure. might hit a little something, bust a move, but. Shit, I'm trying to score now. Sure, man. I mean, with me, when it comes to celebrations, bro, like, I, I'm at a point now, like, where I just can't hit. It's got to be the right moment for a celebration. Like, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say, like, I just feel like where I'm at, like, especially with my, my career and, like, the expectations that I have for myself. Like, not anybody else, ex, ex, not anybody else's expectation for me, mm-hmm. but just my expectation for myself. If I get a sack and we, and we down, like, in the, in, the, uh, in the Baltimore game, bro, we down 20 to 3. Bro, I'm not about to do a celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right can't here, do that. I just feel like, just in my opinion, like I wouldn't want to see like me do a celebration mm-hmm. when we losing like that. It. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. So I just jogged off the field. Well, if it's a if it's a moment like if I get a sack, force fumble for the game, like bro, I'm oh a, you gotta go crazy. Bro, I'm gonna go crazy, bro. I'm gonna run around the field and I'm gonna do all type of shit. Yeah. And for me, it just happened. Like I do, I dance all the time anyway. Mm-hmm. I dance at practice. Hey, oh no, I seen it. All I dance practice. at practice. I dance in locker room. Like, you don't get tired either. Bro, <laughs> I'm just a music. I'm just a music. I'm just a music like dance like type of guy, bro. Like so, I always like dancing. I always like being around music. I like loud music, and it just it's just one of those things that keep me going. So I always had like these dances in my pocket. 
So whenever the game come, when it happened, it just happened. It just it. it just go. And honestly, for me, like especially at, like in this last pass game, I got a sack on second down. Like third down came around, bro. I was tired, bro. From <laughs> <celebrate>. <laughs> dancing. Not actually to play, like, yeah. but from running around uh, and then like yelling. I'm like, damn, I got line up and go again. <laughs> third down, bro. Like this shit is a lot. So I be trying to save my energy too, and I just be trying to wait for the right moment. I seen, I seen, I can attest until um, them the real truth that he the mute the loud music thing is a real thing because we listen to the loud music. At seven a.m., yeah. you be in the room by yourself. Bro, you, you, be in that, you be in the uh, defensive line room by yourself. And one day they was like, "This damn, like y'all hear that shit?" And I was like, "This, yeah, I wonder who over there. They probably over there lit." So I went over there. I was like, "This, nah, I'm all in there by himself, just turned up forever." <laughs> I was like, "This, damn, yeah, you fuck just, with that." But that music just it just got like an energy to it. Like mm-hmm. it don't matter if it's seven a.m., three a.m. 4 a.m. I done had some long nights. Turn. Turn. You know, it don't matter. Turn. It don't Basically matter. Turn. Once you hear Basically like, turn. Once you hear like loud music, bro, it just it just it's just energy in itself. It's just it's energy cool. in itself, man. Another another moment that you went viral for is um, you know, when they had hard knocks and everybody asked, you know, your teammates on the Vikings. Awesome. Who would who would they least like to date their <laughs> sister? And everybody <laughs> unanimous everybody was unanimous and they said Diggs. <laughs> I think they was hating too though. <laughs> I said I think they was hating because back then that team, bro, that team, bro, I could have picked some of those guys. And I didn't like like Fo was like one of my guys. I think I was just an easy target right here, man. Don't believe those guys. Those guys are liars. Only person that's a good guy right there that they're showing is somewhat Adam. Feeling? Yeah, for sure. That's man. my guy. Bro. Are on this Bills team. Like, oh, I love them. Who would who would you least who, which 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 I would say, let me let me write this way. Which bill would you Allow oh, to date your sister. I want to do what we'd rather not, but who would I allow? Who's a presumed good guy on this team? I don't know. Not not uh not Gabe Davis. <laughs> I said I gave oh, Let me find somebody. I need somebody that go to go to mass on before the game and stuff. I like I mean I've been around Dawson Knox. Dawson Knox is Dawson cool. Knox not bad, right? Dawson Knox is cool. Oh, Reggie Gillen. Reggie, oh man, he's good. He's a good guy. He's a solid Straight guy, man. Now. I, I love think, uh, you know, Tommy Doyle is cool. Yeah, does. I like Tommy Doyle. I like Mitch Morris. No, give me, Mitch is great. I love Mitch. Mitch is solid. I love, I love Mitch's around. body. Like, That's Mitch's body. We wouldn't even refer to him as Mitch. Give me, no, give me, give me who you at least. Uh, I mean, besides you and myself, you know, I'm sure like, <laughs> I'm sure they say, I'm sure they say me or you on there. I would probably go. Probably him. Isaiah, man. Like Isaiah, like oh hell no, Isaiah's not going there. No, I, I, I let him talk about. No, I went like Isaiah McKenzie. No, I just wouldn't do it, bro. I'm sure me and you would probably lead those like lists, but I wouldn't like. You know, if I had to pick, like I wouldn't. You know, not 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 That's Isaiah. Perfect. I've been around Isaiah on two different teams, and he's the same guy. <laughs> That's uh, not uh, good. Oh, two teams. And uh, I would I would let Isaiah do it for sure. <laughs> I'm telling little dirty. I can't wait now. Um, you know, you posted back to like another serious note, which is another another reason why like. You know, like I, I fuck with you for real. Is you posted a, a photo of you watching, you know, the Chiefs celebration in 2021, and that's a hard that's a hard moment to be in. Like confetti dropping. You know, I've been there one time. It's just like, bro, I want to get out of here, bro. But like, mm-hmm. for you to like sit here and like take that shit on the chin, I mean, that showed you like you got some resolve, and that showed you like, bro, you knew like I'm gonna be back here. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be back here. This shit gonna be different. For you to like sit there and absorb that in, bro, like. That 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 took a lot, bro. Like this went viral, and it was super inspiring. It was, it was inspiring to me, and I'm and I'm just sitting here. I'm just sitting here on the couch watching him. I'm like, what was uh, like to post that? What what was your intention behind it? It was tough, cause like, like I, shit. Of course, I got hella feedback from that shit, like good and bad. But like, people didn't really understand the, the scope of like the work. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, yeah. you know how long an NFL football mm-hmm. season is. And it was like COVID year. Like, yeah. the COVID year wasn't an easy year for nobody. So, it was my first year in Buffalo. And if you ask anybody at this time, you know, like, everything went white in that. It, everything went right at that point. You know what I'm saying? Up to that point. So, as I see, like, I said, I got the perfect story. You know what I'm saying? I got traded here. Things are going great. Yeah. Um, we got a good team. We got a great quarterback. We're going to the show. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm not thinking nobody in my way. So as we get to the AFC Championship, I was like, this shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, another test for us. We're going to get through this. Because the playoff run we had, we beat the Colts. We beat Baltimore. Yeah. I'm like, this shit. Like, we ain't walking through stuff, but we we figuring it out. Excuse me. So in that moment, it was definitely something that was heart-wrenching, something that, like, it hurt me the most because to see everything go right and then in one of the biggest moments for us to get to the next level, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I aspire to be. I want to play in the Super Bowl. I want to do everything I can. I fell short of it, and I felt like I didn't do enough. And then, like, in that moment, I just wanted to really gas 
or bring it full circle to be like this. Okay, you put all that work in. You still need to see. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You need to be motivated. You need to be pushed. Because I, it's crazy. You got you ask God for something, He give it to you. And I ask God before every every game, continue to motivate me, continue to push me to be a better player. And uh, that obviously was something that pushed me. And then like it was crazy because, fuck, next year that we played him, um, I think like we fell short again, or we fell short or whatever in the, in the long haul. And I'm like this, fuck, like what can I do different? And it's up to this point. I'm like this still. You not you. It's not. It's a team game. You yeah. know what I'm saying it's not just one person. Mm-hmm. You got a great supporting cast. Like I got a, a great group of receivers. I got a great quarterback. So, me putting it in perspective, I'm like this. Yes, I want to do everything I can for this team, but be you. You know what I'm saying I had to. I had to be like be you. you know what I'm saying play your role, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying whatever a game requires, you just be that. Like, and don't try to bite off more than you can chew because you can't do everybody's job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying that's their job, and they do a great job at it. So why not just trust them? So. Man, we're going to get there, fam. 100%. Oh, I'm man. telling you. I'm telling you, bro. We're going to get there, man. I don't like making promises, bro. But when you got teammates, they work the way you work. And you got teammates like Josh and everything. Like, we're going to get there. We're we going to get there. I'm going to do everything I possibly oh, can man. in my power to, to uplift my teammates. And me personally, like, I'm going to do everything for us to get there. It's a great moment. I'm going to win a Super Bowl. It's like football heaven. That's how I described it to, mm-hmm. you know, the Rams last year. And when you got... The confetti dropping, and they play that NFL Network film. They play that dun 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 dun. No, like, they don't. When you walking out there, film, and it's just one of those moments that you want. Like, I want like my brothers and my colleagues to feel that moment. It's mm-hmm. football heaven. That shit go down forever, fam. And I'm I'm gonna do everything I can to get there, fam. And we will get there. I'm all about positive, yeah. you know, talking positive yeah. affirmations, bro. We gonna get there, fam. We can run the footage back. Hell and, yeah, bring it. You know, back. we can play it. It might not happen how we wanted it to happen, bro, but it's gonna happen, bro, for sure. I'm with you. Um, you know, you had a, another viral moment. It might not have been you, but it, you know, it was oh, your nephew. Oh, it, it was Aiden. your nephew Aiden. meeting Dak, and um, it was your nephew. It was your nephew Aiden, and his his favorite quarterback mm-hmm. is Dak, but he he nervously mistook him for <laughs> Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, man. That's if you if you know my nephew, I don't know. I don't want to say this, but like. He might have been trying to be funny because my, <laughs> my nephew has like such a big personality. Yeah. If you just have a conversation with him, he could have been just trying to be funny like in that moment because, <laughs> but he is still a little kid, so you never know. But I've been around him and he say like little slick stuff to me, and I'm like, boy, I beat you up, type Bob. So uh, he's definitely one of those kids that big personality. He needs to he needs to be on a podcast at yeah. one point, and he needs to have a conversation because. He has a lot to say, you know and he has a big person that he's respectful, and that's my little man. I might have to beat him up still, but that's my little man. Bro, you got to your unk, bro. But I seen I seen some some dope clips. I was watching. He said, um, you know, he was watching Trayvon play, and he was like, believe in yourself. Yeah. And you could just tell like the relationship that Trayvon got with his son. Like that's the type of shit that I want to have with my son. Yeah. I want to tell him like to always believe in yourself, yeah. and for him to pay it forward back to his dad on the sideline. That's line, amazing. That, that that shit was super cool, man. Yeah, and speaking of Trayvon, oh yeah, my man. What's it like having a brother in the NFL? Shit. And how are you both finding success? I know y'all had like some talks when y'all was growing up. Like, what is that like to like be here in this moment to have a brother in the NFL and both of y'all having success? Yeah, you know, you on a cold team, he on a cold team, like. Yeah, that, bro? that shit. That shit really crazy. Cause, like, growing up, like when we was in like middle school or high school, like, like I always had the vision like going in the NFL. Like yeah. all of, like us, all the yeah, yeah. all the guys that we had no plan made B. it. It yeah. was zero plan B. I was going in the NFL. All this other shit that y'all got going on. Uh, this is what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I get it. It's ways we got to do X, Y, Z. But I'm going in the NFL, and it was the same for my little brother. It's like I feel like. I ain't gonna say I paved his steps because he walked he walked his own line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just try to lead him to the best to the best way I knew. So it's like to see him mature in the process. Like I went to I stayed home for him because I wanted to kind of stay close to him. Yeah. And then when it was his turn, he went to Alabama, and I was like, damn, I probably should have went away. <laughs> Shit. But I watched him at Alabama go through a maturation process of his own too. Like he had got injured. Uh, he played a little bit, and he went to being a starting corner and having highly success. So to see my little brother do that. Then get drafted to our childhood team. Like Dallas was what we grew up liking. It was mine too, yeah. So it's like fucking crazy. It's like yeah. it's damn, like little bro just got drafted to Dallas. And it was like a full circle moment. Like you he's crazy you bring up Aiden. Before the draft, my brother had like 30 hats. Like at the teams, you know how we, yeah. you know how it is. But you are probably had two hats because you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, bro, I, bro, I thought I just knew I was going to the <laughs> bro, for sure, bro. So uh before before my brother got drafted, 
his son said he going here and he picked up a Cowboys hat. Oh, we got like hard. video of it. So it's like, damn, like he really picked up the Cowboys hat. My brother got drafted to the Cowboys. And then like as he got in the league, he had his first year and he had dropped like five picks. And I'm like, damn, you forgot how to play receiver that quick. Cause he yeah. played receiver in college until his like set last two years. Then his next year he went crazy, right? Yeah. So he, the, he had tw- with yeah, eleven picks. Eleven picks. So I said, if you if you caught half of the balls that you dropped, you at least had ten picks, yeah. nine picks. He was like, Don't worry about it, bro. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my hands on him this year. And like he had game after game, picks after pick, two picks. Like, I'm like this. He going crazy. Yeah. Like, so I took a step back from being like his brother. Now I became like a real fan. Like I'm talking shit. Like I played. Like I'm rooting for the Cowboys. Like even on my team, like guys are like this. Your brother ain't got a pick yet. I forgot who it was last year. It was against the Patriots. They was like throwing at him, but they wasn't really throwing at him. Yeah. And uh, I was like, this. He do for one. Don't worry about it. It'll come when it's supposed to happen. He had got a pick late in the game, and they ended up winning. And I was like, this. I told y'all. So just to have that ability to talk shit behind my little brother, you know what I'm saying? It's like damn, like. My little brother really him. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's For not sure. like it's not like I'm I'm a I'm a decent player. My brother got some drop off. My my brother's so nice. And it's yeah. like damn, it's I feel like my mom should have should have saved some of them eggs or something. Like, we could have <laughs> yeah, I can run it back, bro. I've been around I'd have been around Trey, bro. I I probably spend more time around Trey than I have like you. Of yeah. course now we on the same team. I spend more yeah. time around you, but you know, for both of y'all to be brothers, bro, like shit yeah. must have been like dope growing up, bro. But he did he did say that, you know. If he played y'all, if he played you, he would lock, he would lock you down. And he said if y'all, you know, he said if he played y'all, that he would lock you down. Like, if y'all had 10 reps one-on-one, you know, I don't want it, because I got a brother, too. I had no choice. Like, you know how this shit brother. go. You know how this well, shit if go. You, if you had 10 reps against your brother, like, what you think? I'll probably let him win, like, two. Just because that's spam. Like, yeah, this is my little brother. Like, I want, <laughs> I always tell him, like, so, do you, you have an older brother or a younger brother? I got a younger brother. So, look, you can attest, is this true? I call it a little brother syndrome, like, or like a little brother curse that they really can't beat you in nothing. Like yeah. they'll get close to beating you, but yeah. a lot of the times they can't beat you. And I think it's like I I play my little brother in Madden and all those games a million times, but he'll get close and in the end he'll like he'll like fuck it up. It'd it be something mental yeah, that they something do. Yeah, small, yeah, yeah. something yeah, yeah. small. Something like this. You got a little brother syndrome. It happens. You're not gonna be able to beat me. Maybe one day. So I think that's going to apply the same shit. We play a game. You know what I'm saying? If I win the battle, I won the war. You know what I'm saying? We, I, I, we better yeah, win that sure. game. But if I win that battle, I could talk shit for the rest of it. Bro, I'm like that with my little brother too, yeah. fam. Like, bro, we, you know, now we're to a point we both like we both grown and shit. Like we kind of took a step back, but but growing up, bro, like I want to win everything. Like, especially if it's my little brother. We he two years younger than me. We go to the same school, we on the same football mm-hmm. team. Like I just I want to win everything, but if it's him like versus somebody else, and I'm all you know, oh yeah brother for yeah, sure. But yeah. you know if it's me and him, like I gotta have I gotta put that thumb yeah. on him. I gotta put my foot down. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you on that. Speaking of, speaking of little brothers, like Josh Allen is is like one of your your little brothers too, a family too. Like what has he meant to your career? I know we talked about it earlier. What has he meant to your career for, for real? For real? Shit, like uh, like damn near everything. Like I ain't gonna cap. It ain't no cap when I say that because. Shawty, excuse me, Shawty really, like I say, like changed my career, like from where I was mm-hmm. to how I'm viewed now. Like I always saw myself as that player, but I, like it was hard to put the pen to paper because my stats wasn't a match in it, you know what I'm saying? My play was good, but was it like, you know what I'm saying, as good? Like I used to run good routes, like, you know what I'm saying, shit like that. But I really wanted to cement myself as one of the best players, if not the best receiver in the league. So when I first got to Buffalo, it was like it worked in tandem, like, Josh Allen needed a wide receiver, one. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He had some good-ass receivers. Yeah, like, yeah. Josh, jo- John Brown was a hell of a receiver, um, but they needed something. You know what I'm saying? And when I came there, I just, they embraced me being myself. Like, as you can see, like, they embrace you being yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, you ain't got to be nobody else no, but yourself you when you get perform, here. That's it. And that's it. So, when I saw that, and I, when I first met him, I tell people this story all the time. He said, Steph, like, I was like this, like, I think you're a good-ass quarterback. Like, I really do. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not capping when I say that. He said, I'm not going to ask much of you, m- much of you. And I was like, so what's up? What you need? He was like, just get open and catch the ball. He's like, I don't care how you do it. I don't care none of that. Just get open That's and catch hard. the ball. And I was like, shit, you sure? Because it's like, it's ways that <laughs> it's all type of ways to get open. <laughs> I said, you sure? And he was like, he was like, yeah. I was like, shit. And then from that point on, we was hooping. And then up to this point now, it's like this shit. How good can we be? You know what I'm saying? Because if you got a good quarterback, you got something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm grateful because I've had some good quarterbacks in the past. Shout out to them. But this that quarterback that I that God had for me at the yeah. end of the tunnel. Like, yeah, I got something for you. Just make sure you're sharpening your blade when it's time. It's gonna it's gonna cut. One hundred percent. Bro, what what makes what makes Josh special? 
And what makes you want to go? What, what makes you want to grow old with Josh? Uh, we told him that last week. He kind of turned red a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he get a little shy. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Um, probably because he's still like a little brother. Like you know, what I'm saying I have a little, I have a younger sibling, but he's like a big little brother. Like he still got the, he's still playful. He's still like got that maturation process that you've seen him grow from a good player to like one of those exceptional players, like MVP candidate mm-hmm. type player. Yeah, Shout out he to He going to be the MVP. You know that's in my opinion. Right now, things looking, he blowing shit out the water. So it's like, he was in the mix last year for just as far as like to see him have success and to kind of see us grow together. That's coming from that little brother and that family mindset because it's like this damn, like we kind of like came up together. Like you, yeah. you the man now, you know what I'm saying? I'm pulling for him in, in ways that people won't imagine. It's just like this, damn, bro, to see him have successes like this. Like, you really that, you really that boy, you know what really? I'm saying? And he deserve it. Like, how he carry himself, and how he do it his own way, too, exactly. bro. He's, bro, he's so, he, he, he's a, I, I call him the Will Ferrell of quarterback. Nah. Like, <laughs> I can see it. You know, he, bro, he joke about everything. Yes. Like, he take no, he don't take nothing nice serious, shit. bro. Mm-hmm. Like, he do, he do shit his way, bro. And it's, it's just dope to be around. You know, both of y'all, bro. It's dope. It, it's dope to be in the fucking locker room every day with Coach McDermott. Only care about winning. 100%. I think Josh kind of rub off on Coach McDermott. hundred percent. I think 100%. I think he used to be a tough guy back in the day. I heard. I heard. And Josh he like, gave he you like, that. He like super cool yeah, now because yeah. of Josh. Yeah. When I got there, also too, I was like this. They were saying like he was like a little bit more like tight, like on X Y Z. And I was like, shit, like I ain't really seen it. He was like this. Yeah, he's he loosening up a little bit, especially <laughs> when you got here too, like. Josh got Josh got that effect on people also, I think, too. So it's, yeah. even in the game, like, he had that big play in the beginning of the game, and then he had threw an interception. Like, you know, uh, him and Gabe was just wasn't on the same page on something. Like, it was like a 21-yard line. We had converted it. Mm-hmm. Just some small receiver talk. So coming back, he was like this. You know, when a guy gets a pick, like, he usually quarterbacks be like, man, I ain't throwing over there no more. Fuck that. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to protect my stats or whatever he is. He has zero of that mindset. He was like this. We had another big play. Gabe had caught it with one hand. Hell of a catch, by the way. Hey, shout out to Gabe. Gabe for sure. One seventy. He said. He said. He said. He said. Don't worry about it. We going. We going to go right back at him to Gabe. And I'm like this. This month. This motherfucker's crazy. <laughs> so, you know, but, but he's just a dog. And like, he put us in a situation. He'd give you confidence as a receiver. Yeah. Like, shit. Okay. Some stuff ain't going to go right. But don't worry about it. We're going to come back to you and we're going to hit him where it hurt. For sure, man. Um, I think, you know, one, I, I want to ask you this. One, Thing that the viewers would be surprised to hear about Josh that they didn't know before. But I know last week we talked about him. We talked about him throwing up too. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah. I wasn't surprised because throughout yeah. this whole time, even in the preseason, mm-hmm. like you know, I'd be walking in there and I just hear a, hey, no. And I'd, <laughs> and I'd be like, bro, who is that? Like, <laughs> and now you just on? now you just like expect it. Now you just mm-hmm. expect it. Like, yeah. if you ain't hear, if you don't hear somebody like gagging in the background, you like, what's, okay, going, what's on? going on? What's, what's going, going on? on? So would that be something that you would say? I would have shared that too. Like that's something that don't nobody really know. But he got that Willie Beeman. You know, yeah. Willie Beeman used yeah. to throw up in the huddle. But at least he has enough respect to throw up like before the game type shit. So I'll check on him. Like, all right, all right, you threw up yet? And he was like, he'd be like this. Uh, nah, not yet. And I'm like this. Let's hurry and get that shit out of the way because I ain't trying to hear that shit in the huddle. Because he'll throw up sometimes before the game, and then kind of like when he first get out there. Yeah. And I'm like this boy. Why the fuck are you so nervous? You go out here and who? Yeah, like, for sure. But it's like he got that. That little kid, like that, you know what I'm saying? Before game, a little bit of jitters, and it's like that he got an earl. So, you know what I'm saying? I fuck with it, though. I'm like, this shit. She, for, for me, like, where I, when I hear that, like, at this point in my career, because I used to be that guy, mm-hmm. and, my, and mine used to be just off anxiety, because on teams that I was on, if I didn't get a sack, force fumble, fumble, recovery, touchdown, we might not win the game. Yeah. Even if I do yeah. do that, like, it still might be a competition. So, yeah. it, was, it wasn't pressure of, of, it wasn't pressure from the outside world, it was just mm-hmm. pressure from myself. Like, like, I have to go out here and ball. So I used to be in that environment mm-hmm. and like I used to feel like that before games. So now being like year 12 and like being where I'm at mentally, like when I hear that, I just be like, okay, like, yeah, I'm, I'm about to go out here yeah. and ball out. I got, I got mm-hmm. us. Don't even trip. Like, you get it. I got us. It, now, it's, now it's like, bro, I'm about to go out here and win a game by myself. Yeah, like, you yeah, ain't even yeah, got to yeah, trip. You feel that just, shit. Just, do, just do what you do, fam. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to do it for us, yeah. fam. So it's just become one of those things that you want to hear, fam. You want to hear something crazy? My first game, my first game I ever played was against the Denver Broncos. Oh, yeah? And the year y'all won the Super Bowl. So oh, that's crazy. I got to play against No Fly Zone. That was Teddy, right? Yeah, I got yeah, to play yeah, against yeah. No Fly Zone. I played against you, Shane. Shane Ray. Yeah, yeah. DeMarcus Ware. That was Shane's um, first act that game, too. I was watching. Like, I went back and watched that game not too long ago. Just some highlights. And I was like, damn, that was my first game. And that's when I... My first game is when I kind of, like, 
was close to winning a job to be yeah. playing on a consistent basis. So I was like this. My first game was against the Super Bowl champions. You know what I'm saying? And that was a good... Y'all team was good as yeah, shit. Yeah, y'all good, team, yeah. That Peyton Manning ran. Yeah. Like, that was a team full y'all of... Had, like, y'all had AP too, right? Hell yeah. I mean, hell yeah. He had bust one. He, he had bust, bust one. one. He didn't really have a lot that day, but he had bust one or two. And I was like, this. they got a good ass team. And now looking back and coming full circle, looking at our team... Yeah. Kind of similar to the team y'all had. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like a different different quarterback play a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You're a little younger yeah. than Peyton. But Manning, the, the but factors that make a Super Bowl team, we got all are there. there. Yeah. And I'm like, this, damn, that it came full circle again. We we all I always like to, you know, in you know, my my podcast, we're asking my guys, you know, who are the who are the top five defenses that you face or the top mm-hmm. five corners, or a little bit of both. Like if it's a top okay. five defense and they got this guy, like what who gives you nobody give you really like trouble like that, mm-hmm. but you know, who presents the most adversity whenever you play them? Yeah, I'll give you both. My top five defenses, I'm gonna give it to you in general too, cause like I remember being young and I was like, damn, these motherfuckers are good. That Denver team was one of the best defenses I played against. Going to against, yes. Yeah. When y'all won the Super Bowl, it was like a keep to lead, you know what I'm saying? A grown a keep to lead. Yeah. This ain't no young, you know no, what I'm saying? It's like yeah, he yeah. know his shit. Chris Harris. Chris Harris, you know what I'm saying? People don't don't really know, but people in football know how yeah. good Chris Harris really mm-hmm. is. Chris Harris was one of the top DBs in the league for a long time. Mm-hmm. So I went to get Chris Harris, I went to keep to lead, and I went to Bradley Roby, you know what I'm saying? So at that time I was like, this shit. Like I really took a lot of lumps as a young kid that I see receivers now might not ever take, you know what I'm saying? But I took it on the chin because like I felt like it was gonna make me better. So like Denver was a was a tough task. Seattle was a tough task back then. Like you know how good yeah, Seattle was. Yeah. was. I was like, boom for Richard sure. Sherman yeah. and all them all those guys. I was like this damn like when I first got in the league, it was weird because in college you these you think these guys are in the league. It's like it's kinda like far removed. But as I got in there, I'm like damn I'm playing against these motherfuckers and these motherfuckers I gotta hoop. Like I gotta I gotta contribute. So uh him a prom, a prom Patrick Peterson is really still oh, one yeah. of the best DBs to ever sure, play the sure. game, yeah. uh, in my opinion. Um, and now in today's game, I give you my shit, my my top. That's a couple of defenses, but we play some defenses now. Uh, Kansas City obviously presumes some type of difficulty because you know what I'm saying they do so many different things, mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying if they're trying to take you out of the game, it's, it's like as a receiver, it's possible. You know what I'm saying you can do whatever you can to try to get the ball, um, and having that offensive mind and those OCs, it really helps. Yeah. But uh, KC is obviously one of the good defenses. Who else did we do we play? Shit. I thought LA was a good team too. Like LA they, was, bro. They was a minute on break. No matter what the score said. No matter what the score said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew I knew it was gonna happen like that often for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I was over there with them boys. Like I, I didn't I knew that's why I kept saying, like, don't blink, don't blink, because at any given moment they can be right yeah, back 100%, in the game. Hundred percent. Uh but my I give you my top my top corners in the league is obviously Jalen Ramsey is one uh one of the top guys. I try not to do one to five, just like yeah. one, one, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to rank. Jalen Ramsey, uh Xavier Xavier Howard is one of the best mm-hmm. DBs in the league. Like Xavier? get a lot of get a lot of uh get a lot of love, especially from the people in the league. Um Darius Slay, I was crazy because I played against him in, when I was in Minnesota. We used to battle it out us in Detroit. And I was like, damn, this motherfucker good. Like yeah, he's he quick, he fast, you know what I'm saying? He's still strong. He, like he's one of the best DV uh Slay. Um obviously, you know what I'm saying? One of them, I gotta say, cause he is nice. You know what I'm saying? My little brother, you know what I'm yeah. saying? My little brother, too, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Aside from him being my family, yeah. I think he's very exceptional at the DB position. And I'm trying to remember one more guy. I think uh my our, our guy, for real, for real, um, he might be he might be at the very, you know what I'm saying, them top two, top three when healthy is to Davis White. Yeah, right? sure. like he 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 he's one of those people I see work extremely hard and it translates. So um, those are my top guys. And I might be leaving some guys out, but my bad on the defensive tip. You know, I, I work. I work yeah, no out every season. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, disrespect. Yeah, I, I work out every season. I take, I take the blame. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna end it with a little trivia game. Oh, that they want to play. Y'all we call this, this. We call this the Minneapolis <laughs> Miracle Trivia Game. All right. I'm not gonna put you on the clock or nothing, but I got. Let's see, one, two, we can three, try. We can four, try. Where the five, clock six, seven. I got seven questions I want to ask you. I'm clutching Family Feud, too, if you know Family <laughs> Feud. <laughs> I got, this is my first question. How much time was on the clock when the ball snapped? He said it. Uh, 14? Shit. He was close. Ten, 10 seconds. Damn. I knew it was something shorter than that. It was, bro. Ten seconds, bro. Like, had one more play? I was trying to get out of bounds. Like, when I caught it, 
I was like, shit, he going to hit me. Let me just fight my way out of bounds. And then I just felt somebody like not hit me. He blinked, bro. He had to blink. He, he, he had to blink. He had to blink. <laughs> and he, and the rule, the ball rule on this team is don't blink. When I felt somebody blink, I swear to God, I said, boy, we going to we go. <laughs> <laughs> what down was it? Shit. We have a lot of time. Third. And it was third down. Oh, yeah, third I'm down, one for one. For sure. one, one, for one, sure. one one. One one. One one. Okay, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get you one right here. What what color jersey was you wearing? Oh, I said seen it. Purple. Yeah. That's easy. Alright, what about Two this? One. What what cleats did you have on? Uh uh, I know, I know. Um the DS2, the future cleats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right dirty yep. sprite too. That, you know, I was going up before the game. Too close. He said, bro, that, 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 bro, that's my favorite. Bro, that's my favorite album, bro. I like Evo too. I like Evo too. I listen to both of them before every game. Yeah, too much. The two closest uh, defenders when you caught the ball. Um, my man, that's from this city. Uh, Kenny, Kenny, something. Um, Kenny Ken Crowley. Ken Crowley. Yeah. yeah, Ken Crowley and, and Marcus Williams. I knew yeah. that. Yeah, he got there for sure. He had a, he's he's having a good ass career too. Like yeah. aside from that play, like you can see him, he had like a nice bounce back. Like he having a good ass career. He in Baltimore actually. Celebration as you cross the goal line. Oh yeah, I tossed that motherfucker like I was. Uh, what's that thing? Are you not entertained? I, <laughs> I think I was like in a what's movie. Yo, bro? So, uh, we need to make that a movie. First person that you hugged after. Uh, he hugged me. Uh, it's one of my. It's my one of my close friends. You know, we were real close back in the day. It was Caleb Jones. Like, um, he was like one of those guys that was pulling for me during the year. Like, was watching me kind of battle that mental process of like shit not going right. I'm like fuck, and he's just like, it's gonna be all right, but watch, it's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. So he was ran on the field and gave me the biggest hug. I was like, this man, I love you, bro. It was we was it was lit. That's hard, bro. The relationship that you build with your teammates and shit, bro, it ain't nothing Thank like bro. it, bro. Thank and you. then you know they, bro, you know they want to talk. They want to talk about the Chiefs, fam. So yeah. I, you know this. So we like to we like to do our we like to have every we like to have a song title for every we talk, we like to treat our season like an album. Hundred percent. So if you had to if you had to name this week's um, song title versus the Chiefs, what would that what would that song title be? Let me see. Let me see. I might have something right here. Let me look right here. Um, something had just dropped. Bullseye two. A bullseye two will go crazy. Bullseye right, two. Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking with that. I'm fucking with bullseye two. I mean, because I mean, we gotta play them again. You know, we and you know, a lot of Bills fans had this circle. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, they wanted to see it off the roof. We're gonna we're gonna see them again 100. percent I like. What was I too? Sure. I don't like. I mean, I don't want to take you know Boston Richie. You know his, but song hard, bro. We had to take it, bro. Bulls yeah, I two. Bulls I two point Yeah, 100%. and you know they. How are we treating this week's preparation? Shit, as coach would say, you know what I'm saying. It, uh, which also, like you said, just don't blink. You know, we going into it with the right mindset. Hostile environment. You know, I feel like this team kind of falls in love with that hostile environment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. We built to win, and we got to do the necessary preparation during the week. Like he kind of. Gave us a lot of uh, information as far as like what we're doing in the next one. So it's just like focus on this week. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Take it one play at a time, one day at a time. And he's going to ask for execution because we're going to need a high level of execution in order to win this game. Offensively and defensively, yeah. man. And we know, you know, the Bills fans had this one circle, you know, a long time ago right. after, you know, what happened in the playoffs. 100%. Like, you know, this is a different season, different year. Both teams are different. But I know we both looking forward to this game. 100%. You know, this is uh, this is the biggest game of the year because it's the next, next game. One. It's next you know, so we're gonna take this one super serious, like we've been doing all season long. Stick to the plan, take it one play at a time, and always don't blink. And I appreciate you for having me on the show, bro. Yeah, man, I appreciate you coming. Appreciate man. you on the Von Cast, man. Y'all tune in and on a special guest. You said we what we gonna have Travis Kelsey next. Yeah, we, we gotta have Travis, bro. You gotta get, get out here, man. man. We gonna get him on here, man. <laughs> we gonna get him on here. I got appreciate you for show, my boy. Yeah, no doubt.